Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community and podcast connecting the people with the products, the lessons, the strategies to help push their business forward. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my good buddy and co-host Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How's it going today, Matt? It's going well. I uh, I think the, the beginning of this live stream, I was talking about the, uh, the mess behind me, but uh, I'm currently building something. Hopefully it'll be finished next weekend, so the next uh, show won't have a messy background. Well, but, when, you get, when you get done with it, you'll have to share it with the group because I think it's going to turn out pretty neat. Yeah, if it if it comes out well, I'll share it. If not, we'll just forget it ever happened and I wasted <laughs> a bunch of money. Luckily, it's in the office, so it's all a write off. But That's uh, true. yeah, what about you, man? How's uh, how's your your Thanksgiving? Going good. I'm glad that Black Friday stuff's pretty much over. Mm. Uh, it's fun for a little while, and then it's just grinding on my nerves. So kind of glad all that's done with. I got to take all the notices off of every website this morning and uh, just kind of move on back to normal life, hopefully. But today we are joined for the first time by Paul C. from WP Tuts. We uh, we connected here recently. Luckily, Paul has been super kind and been telling people about the wall very nicely. So there's lots of new people in our group, uh, thanks to Paul. Uh, and probably having a chat with him is long overdue. So today we are going to actually be talking about custom post types. So that's something Paul has done tons of content on and something every time we kind of have threads going about custom post types, people seem there, there's a faction of people that don't fully understand how it works. And I think probably a, a, a silent group of people that we don't even hear from that are afraid to even ask. So I wanted to put together a nice resource for people kind of explaining what are custom post types, how they work, why you should think about using them in your projects and all that. So hello and good afternoon, Paul. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing very, very well, Kyle. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for inviting me on to the Admin Bar Show. It's much appreciated. Well, uh, we're lucky that you would uh, grace us with your presence today. Absolutely my pleasure. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, let's uh, let's just dig into this. So we do we are doing this live on Facebook for anybody that's listening to a replay later on. Uh, so we're going to try to monitor all the comments in here and make sure if people have questions uh, that we go back and answer those. So definitely, if you have questions, drop them in the chat. Matt and I are both trying to keep an eye out on it. Uh, and we'll try to get to that. So I guess, first of all, let's just start at the beginning. Uh, what is a custom post type and how is it different from just the normal posts that are inside WordPress? I suppose the first thing to sort of say is that it's not really any difference to a, norm, a normal WordPress post type. I mean, custom post types, WooCommerce, anything like that that you use inside WordPress is a post type, simple fact. But most people, when they want to expand what they can do with something like WordPress, which was never really intended to be a, a content management system and an online shop and all the kinds of things that we kind of take for granted that that's what it is these days, you know, they just basically create custom post types, WooCommerce, custom post type for the products. It's just the same thing, you know, taxonomies, they're just basically ways of grouping your custom post types together, tags, all the same thing. So I think the confusion that kind of lies around a lot when it comes to do with custom post types is the terminology as opposed to the technology. So when people start talking about this kind of thing, it just adds confusion because what are taxonomies? What's the difference between a taxonomy and a tag, a tag and a category? Well, really, there's no real difference between tags and categories. They're just basically ways of grouping your post types together, whether they're custom or they're WordPress. So you just have some tools like custom post type UI or jet engine from Crocoblock. And they just simply allow you to easily and visually create a custom post type. So you can use it for things like it could be books. It could be a movie collection. It could be a business listing website, could be a real estate website. Every single property on a real estate website is all put inside a, a property custom post type, but it still works in exactly the same way as a normal WordPress post or page does. It's just, different terminology for the same thing and a simple way to allow you to create your own variations upon that basic theme. Right. And I think that's something, you know, you bring up a good point that a lot of the tools we already use, whether you realize it or not, like WooCommerce, for example, just because just about everybody has at least installed WooCommerce. It's basically just a system of a custom post type. So you're already using probably some pre-built ones, whether you realized it or not. Uh, I think the idea here is probably to talk about kind of how you can create those on your own for specific things. So uh, you mentioned a few of the tools, and I do want to go into that here in a few. Um, 
But so, so let's talk about some examples of why you would set up a, what you would set up a custom post type for rather than just going in and creating a bunch of one-off pages. Like what would be uh, the purpose and maybe some examples of setting up a custom post type? The problem if you just use the basic tools, like you say, the posts and the pages that are part of WordPress is that when your site starts to grow, and let's just take a real estate sort of website as an example, when that starts to grow, it very quickly becomes very unwieldy when you want to expand, you want to add in your know, sort of new types of properties and those kinds of things. So it makes a lot more sense to have its own dedicated section. So, you know, you can create your own custom post types and add your own custom posts and you can organize those in whatever fashion you want. And then let's just keep that analogy going. When you then need to have the agents that are going to sell the properties, you don't want them lumped into the same location as the properties because then it just really becomes complex and confusing. So it makes more sense to separate those out into their own component parts. So you'd have you know, your agents, they could be covering a certain area and then you can put that into a taxonomy. So for example, you know, your categories, your tags, whatever kind of taxonomy you want to create to group those agents together. And the same goes for the properties. You know, you're going to have condos, you're going to have apartments, you're going to have houses, you know, all different kinds of things. So it doesn't make any sense to combine all of those into one big sort of lump. It makes more right. sense to separate those out into various different parts. And that's where the benefit of things like custom post types and, you know, creating custom taxonomies really comes in. It just allows you to organize things in a much simpler fashion and expand those various different components as and when you need to with just the things you need them to include. So it's just a simpler way of working more than anything. Yeah, yeah and, and I think, go ahead. Go ahead I was Matt. gonna say, and it makes uh, like doing so like makes it much easier on the user's end as well as yours. So like, you know, if you're building a, a website that has like all of these listings, it's easier to uh, to search for, oh, I only want condos or I only want to uh, to look at these types of listings. It allows for that much, much easier as well. Exactly. Yeah. And when you look at, I mean, if you're doing something like real estate, you know, or anything that has potentially, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of, of items inside the listings, you want to make the searching and the filtering as simple as possible for yourself when you build that facility, but also for the end user, you don't want them to have to sort of, you know, clamor through things that are completely unrelated to what they're looking for. So it's more of an organizational kind of tool than a necessity. It just makes your life, and like you say, the end user's lives considerably easier by organizing things in a much more logical, straightforward, and expandable fashion. Because, you know, you are going to come across situations where you set something up now, and if you're working with clients, you know, in six months, 12 months, 18 months, they could come back and say, well, I really want to have this now as well. Well, if you've got to kind of retrofit that into something that is kind of cobbled together, it really makes it very complex to do that in a structured, logical fashion. So again, you know, when you can create custom post types, you can create custom meta fields and associate those with your post types. I don't want a meta field is, it's like the title, the price, those kinds of things. It just makes it easier then when you want to add in basically like another module that's another custom post type with its own meta fields and its own kind of relationships. That's just so much easier moving forward than, like I said, trying to lump everything into one overarching kind of system, which is, you know, what WordPress is without using something like custom post types. Right. right. So, so for me, kind of the the rule of thumb when I'm looking at a, you know, especially a client project, is am I going to have several pages that are going to have the same type of content on each page. So like when we use your property listing thing, they're all gonna have a photo of the property and an address and a price and all these things, right? So that's kind of the first thing I look at. But even like practical, um, you know, things I use, use for myself. So in my agency's website, I have a custom post type set up for my portfolio because basically every one of those uh, projects inside my portfolio are gonna have the same type of information. So within that custom post type, um, you know, with, with the default WordPress editor, you're getting the, the title field and then the content area and then categories. And that's basically all the, the spots you have. Now, if you're using a page builder, obviously you go into a whole separate area and, and create your content however you want, but really all of that's just fitting inside that content field inside your post. Um, so for 
Um, like my portfolio, for example, I've set up the custom post type that has the name of the project, the URL to where people can go uh, visit it live, the screenshots of it, a testimonial from the customer, whatever fields are going to be repeated on each one of those posts. So it really makes it easy for the back end when you're, when you're wanting to create and post content to your website, when you already have this template that's set up, it's basically like filling in a form on the back end to create the page. So a lot of times that's what I'll explain to my customers is uh, really we're going to set up a system that if you can fill in a form, you can publish a new page to your website. Mm -hmm. um, and I think some of us, especially, you know, I, I'm in this category too. I didn't start working with WordPress until 2017. So uh, there wasn't a time I was using WordPress before I was using a page builder. So I think I think there's some kind of line of demarcation there where people who came in after page builders were, you know, all the rage. Uh, we didn't see like the need for that, that kind of system because you could build things so freely. So I think there is, uh, is some kind of, um, you know, some kind of divide there, you know, where people either get it or don't. So, uh, you know, I mentioned in here, uh, custom fields. So within your custom post types, the, the big benefit inside of there is you can create all the fields you want. So tell us a little bit about what fields are and what role they play inside the custom post type. Well, basically, when you start out with taking a look at a post or a page with WordPress without any kind of custom post type, whether you, you're working with a page or a post or with media to a certain extent or WooCommerce, they've all got similar fields you've got your title you've got your description field you know you've got your slug and things like that they're basic fields and when you create a custom post type you can assign those and have those included as part of it so your featured image title and so on however when you want to move beyond that which as Carl's already said with a portfolio where you want to put in testimonials links maybe the software you've used and so on yes you could use a page builder to do that but the problem with that comes down to the fact that it gets very time consuming to repeat the same thing and just edit each one of those different areas. Whereas if all you have to do is type up what you want, click to insert the image or the gallery of images in a nice, simple, straightforward form layout that you're used to working with, you know, it could be a front end setup, it could be a back end setup, depending if it's for yourself or your client. Well, you can expand all those very easily by tying in a tool like advanced custom fields into your custom post types. And that just allows you to bolt on extra fields of various different types. So text fields, you know, WYSIWYG fields. So if you want the full text editor experience with media uploads, you can do that, you know, numeric fields. So whatever you kind of want to do, you can create custom fields and associate that either with your custom post type, or you can tag those on to existing post types. So the normal WordPress pages, for example, and posts, you can still add it to that. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of flexibility. I think this is the thing that probably scares people when they see what you can kind of do with tools like, you know, custom post type UI for creating your custom post types. And then a tool like advanced custom fields or pods to create, you know, your, your meta fields that you want to associate with it. There's all these terminologies flying around. There's all these different types of fields and how do you associate it? And, and what's the difference between this field and that field? And it really does become incredibly confusing until you just kind of, it clicks. You have a switch mm -hmm. in your head that just goes, ah, so mm -hmm. that's what a taxonomy is or that's what a meta field is or that's what a custom post type is. When that switch is flicked, it starts to just make a lot more sense. But prior to that, it's incredibly confusing because the terminology is so vast. And to take on something else we've just been talking about where you mentioned templates, one of the other really powerful things, if you're using something like custom post types and meta fields with a tool like Elementor or Beaver Builder or Divi, is that you can then create templates for your custom post types. So then you just simply fill up the details for your new project, your new property, whatever, and the template's already been created. So you're just filling in the blanks and then the page builder takes over the design aspect. So all those different templates for the various different reasons tie beautifully in with your custom post types and your advanced custom fields or yeah, custom meta fields kind of thing. So combining those tools together, which again, like I say, is kind of daunting for people that are not used to this kind of thing. Once you, you see how powerful that combination actually is, you'll start to realize that WordPress just becomes a vehicle 
for your imagination. You can create so much more than just being stuck inside WordPress and relying upon a plugin to do a business directory, a plugin to do something else, a plugin to do something else. You have a toolkit that just simply allows you to create almost anything you want with just using the core skills that you build up, you know, working with these kinds of tools, whichever sort of variation you decide to pick upon. Yeah, and you saying that once it clicks thing, that's the thing that I think is so hard for people. There's just this point before you completely understand and that that completely that just clicks. That's just what it is. It's at a certain point you you get the idea and the premise and the purpose and and it really changes everything. And and like you said, the the biggest benefit for me, uh, especially somebody that uses Elementor, but like you said, Divi, Beaver Builder, uh, a page builder is creating that one template to be able to to edit everything. So <clears throat> for somebody that hasn't done this before, basically you can create a page in your page builder. And instead of typing in the content or selecting the image you want, you just connect it to those fields that you set up, the custom fields you set up. So then it will dynamically pull in that content each new post you set up. So for an example, and, and why this is really important for scalability of a website, uh, I have a client here locally that has a, <clears throat> a live performance theater and they do a few shows a week. And so they've been my client for a little over two years now, a few shows a week for a little over two years. It's a lot of shows that that site got big really, really quick. Uh, and I had originally, um, you know, set this up probably not properly. Uh, not too long after I started, I got it all into a custom post type and got it set up the way I wanted. And there's been many times where they said, hey, on all the show posts, we need to change such and such right? Uh, the color of the background or this new, uh, they added, you can bring your own beer, right? So they wanted BYOB on all the show posts. Now, if I had a couple hundred show listings that were all individual posts or pages, I would have to open all of those up in my page builder and change everything out one at a time uh, for all those. But with the template, uh, I just opened the template, changed out what I needed to in that static content area uh, and press save. And it automatically applies to all those posts. So for me, the the scalability and being able to change things like that is, I mean, that's, that's a huge game changer when you're talking about growing a website. But to take that one step further, imagine if they come along and said, well, We've got a hundred events now planned for the next year in this particular category, but we want to change the name of that category. Imagine having to do that manually, whereas now using something like, you know, advanced custom fields or custom post types, you can create that ta taxonomy that is the category for your event. And then you can simply go in, just change the title and all of those hundred events are changed straight away. You know, it's, it's that kind of combination of using dynamic data, which is what advanced custom fields and pods and that kind of creates alongside the templates that you you build as part of you know a tool like Elementor and then just having that combination of those two together that when you want to make a global change it now becomes something that takes you seconds instead of potentially hours and try to tell the client it's going to take hours to just basically change one word to another yeah and you're going to build them for several hours and they're going to be like well I simply wanted a word change why is that going to cost me x amount of money you know what I mean? So right. it's like, it doesn't only make your client's life easier. It makes your relationship with that client a little bit smoother because they don't feel like they're getting ripped off for something that should be a really simple change in their head. But for you, you know, the technical side of it is right. that's 50 different templates or a hundred different pages to edit. That starts to become, you know, totally unrealistic and can cause problems. So it's like, it's how you plan these things. And once you start to see the benefits of using them all in conjunction together, can make a massive difference to, you know, your client relationships, your, your, your profitability, just the way that you run your business. It just makes it so much easier. Yeah. And all this kind of uh, ties into Tyler's question, which was why, uh, why use ACF versus cloning a page uh, or uh, just an element or template because of that exact reason. Like you don't have to go into each one of those particular pages, make the change, save it out, go to the next one, make the same change it's yep. just it's widespread you hit you hit it once and it's done yeah and, it, and yeah, it's I, not to say that custom post types are to completely replace pages for example uh, if you have a, a completely unique bespoke page that's not going to be relatable to any other page on your website then there's no real reason to create a custom post type especially if you're using a page builder you could just do that as a one-off but if you're if you have 
Um, so, so let's just talk about some examples of things we've used custom post types before. I know Matt's got some. Uh, so like I said, I've done uh, a couple websites where people have concerts or live performances or doing one right now for a band that wants to list out all their shows, uh, business directories. So I put together a directory for my little neighborhood, uh, all the people who live in our neighborhood and own a business. So I put a directory together, uh, just used a simple, a really, really simple custom post type for that, that listed out the business name and address and phone number and a description and a photo or whatever. Um, like I said, my portfolio uh, over on Docket WP's website, we created a custom post type for all the pre-built lists that are included with the software. So every time we add a new list, I just go in there and fill it in and it's it's ready to go. Matt, uh, you've done some cool ones with um, your golf courses, haven't you? Yeah, pretty much any uh, any of the course tours. Um, so like each, it's a dedicated page to each hole. So there's 18 of those um, and they all contain pretty much the same the same information it just varies a little bit depending on the the yardage of the hole like you know what uh what different um like tips or pro tips they might want to add for each individual one so each one of those sections is tied to uh a, a post or a, a custom field um and that way right like you've got one layout that's not going to change between these 18 uh these 18 pages um, but it just, it funnels all that information in. Yeah. Just the content changes. Exactly. And if they did want to change the layout or the look of those pages, I wouldn't have to do it 18 times. It's just the once I changed that, uh, that template and everything like it, it holds everything there. So whatever changes you make are just boom, there's, there's all of them. Um, similarly, any clients that have, uh, like a lot of different services that they provide. Um, I've got a couple of like veterinarian, uh, type websites and they offer, you know, probably around like 20, 25 different services. Um, but again, all of those pages, the layout's the same. It's just the content, the, uh, the information is different. So those are again, um, actually, before I, uh, I really got comfortable with, uh, with post types or custom fields, um, they, I had built one, one particular, uh, veterinarian website that had somewhere around like 20 different pages, if not more. And each one was a separate page. And I went in on my own time. Uh, you know, I didn't charge them because it was my mistake, but I changed it over eventually so that it was all custom post types so that the next time they uh, they requested changes or whatever it might be, it would be easier on me, like you were saying, Paul, where one of those like, oh, we want to change the uh, the sidebar to display this stuff as well. It's not a headache. It's not like, you know, you get that email and you're like, oh, no, this is so much work. Yeah. It completely takes that away. So you get the email and you're like, okay, cool. It's going to be five minutes. You're going to get back to your customer and they're going to email you back and say, how do you do this so quick? You know, so it's, yep. it's, yeah, that's pretty much the primary, uh, primary two that I use. I what about we, you, Paul, some examples? Yeah. Before I jump onto examples, yeah. let me just sort of answer the original kind of question. If you think of it like this, if you go back to Elemental or if you looked at Elemental free, let's just say you had a site that had 20 of the same pages, you'd have to create 20 pages in your homepage and your contact page and so on. And then when you want to make a change, like we've already mentioned, you have to change all 20 pages. But when they brought templates into Elemental, it was a game changer because now you could start to pull in information from various different parts and create one template. And then you'd have, you know, 100 pages using that one template. Well, take that a step further and think, well, if you had a site that had a thousand listings for businesses, you know, you'd only have to have one template for those businesses one form to input the information for those businesses, a homepage and a contact maybe. So four or five pages, but ultimately you could have thousands of pages that the people would see. But the reality is you've only got a couple of pages being built and the data is just being input from the back end in a very simple form structure. So it's not something to replace the way that you work with a tool like Elementor. It's another way to enhance your process to streamline the process of creating big sites that all, all have replicable data. It's all using different data but in exactly the same structure and then pulled into a template to be output in the same way. The only thing that changes is the actual data that's dynamically being pulled from the record or the page or the post or the custom post type that's being displayed at any one time. So to use that um, and to give some examples, I've built sites for clients um, where I live in the UK 
it's a very touristy kind of location close to me. And I work with this sort of tourist association in that area that deals with um, sort of accommodations, so all different kinds of accommodation from bed and breakfast through to hotels, through to cottages, you know, all those kinds of things. So that's a good example of how you use it. They've got hundreds of different businesses that pay them to list on there. And then they can just simply go in and manage that content without any knowledge of WordPress. They just simply know, okay, there's these 10 fields they've got to fill in with the relevant data that's been supplied on a form that I've created for them that they can give to the client, the businesses. And then they just transfer that written data into the form, hit submit, and there you go. There's a new business added. They want to take one off. They can just delete it from the record. No touching templates, no touching design files. Only need to go in and access that one thing that they need, and they can just add as many businesses as they want. Um, another example is there's an arts festival that runs every year in the same town as where most of these businesses are based. And they wanted the website to do very similar kind of thing and, and similar to what Carl was mentioning with the sort of the, the different gigs and, and things like that. They obviously had various different things, different venues. So there's a custom post type there. You've then got the various different artists. There's a custom post type there. And then you've got the actual exhibitions or the event that they're doing. So when that artist is doing 10 different events in that particular art festival, they can link or I can link that through to the artist and then they can update the artist's bio and all 10 events will have the artist's bio and if they want to make a change to it they just log in edit the artist's bio in the back end of WordPress in one location and then all 10 events will be updated immediately so it just kind of flows through and this is this is the thing that when that switch kind of mm -hmm. clicks should we say you stop thinking of pages you stop thinking of things like that and you start to think of how can I split this information into simple chunks and how can I use a tool like, you know, ACF, like, you know, jet engine, those kinds of tools. How can I use those to make this a, a sort of a reality in the simplest, cleanest way for me now and also moving forward for the client? Yeah, I think you're, you're absolutely right on that. And I think there's a lot of good examples. I, I almost get to the point now where when I'm starting a new project for a customer, I'm, I'm starting with that mindset of, okay, what things in here can I template out? And I think the one, the one uh, line I've written down here while we did this, a good way, I think, of explaining it that I don't know why it didn't occur to me before, but basically uh, a good rule of thumb is if the layout or structure of the page or post or the, the page on the website is going to be the same across multiple ones, but the content is different. There you go. That's when a, a custom post type definitely makes sense. So uh, right there related with custom post types uh, and usually within the same tools, which we are going to have to get to tools. We're getting lots of questions about that, but is taxonomies. And I know this has been brought up a, a couple of times. So why don't we talk a little bit about what is a, a, a taxonomy? Well, taxonomies was a term that kind of just befuddled me for ages. And it's like, why are you using the term taxonomy? It doesn't make any real sense to me. But Forget the term taxonomy, just know that it exists. And all it really means is a way of grouping your custom data together. So let's use WooCommerce as a great example. You have products. The product is your custom post type. And then inside there, you're going to have things like it could be shoes, it could be hats, it could be gloves, it could be t-shirts. Each one of those is a taxonomy. It's a way of grouping your products into a logical grouping. The beauty of taxonomies is the fact that one product can be in multiple different taxonomies. So you could have, for example, um, taking that clothing side of things, clothing would be an overarching taxonomy. And inside that taxonomy, you'd have various different sections. Again, gloves, hats, t-shirts, you know, those kinds of things. So it's just logical ways of grouping and they can either be single levels or they can be what's called hierarchical, which sounds really complicated. And all it really means is parent and child. In other words, clothing is the parent and inside there you have t-shirts, hats, jumpers, all those kinds of things, and they're child, and they can go down multiple different levels if you want. That's basically one form of taxonomy. The second one then, as we're kind of used to with terminology that's used inside WordPress, are tags. So tags is another form of taxonomy, and it works in exactly the same way. So Using the same analogy, you could have tags, for example, the type of material. So it could be wool, it could be polyester, it could be various different kinds of things. 
So then you can have lots of ways of grouping your information, grouping your custom post types, your products, whatever you're kind of creating together into just logical little clusters that have some kind of sense to them. And that's all a taxonomy really is, ways of grouping your custom data into logical chunks. So that, that's, that's what I would suggest you kind of think of when you start to hear the terminology taxonomies being thrown around. Yeah, and, and so you're already using the built-in taxonomies that come with WordPress if you're posting a blog post because it has the little section for picking a category, mm -hmm. which is the default taxonomy setup and a, uh, a section to put in a tag. So creating custom taxonomies just allows you to create, instead of just using the default uh, category, because category might not make sense. Like you said, you can create one for the type of clothing or whatever it may be. So, uh, you know, if we talked about my portfolio example, you could have, you know, the services you did. So did you do SEO? Did you do copywriting? Did you, did you just do design or did you do design and development? So you could create a taxonomy that kind of lists your services you rendered for that, right? So if somebody uh, from a front end application, if somebody's browsing the site, they, uh, you could have those taxonomies linked and you could sort all those posts and just see everything where I did the design work and then boom it's just going to filter in and show all the ones that we've clicked that taxonomy in there so uh, that's definitely a, a good way of thinking about it for sure so let's let's move on and talk a little bit about tools so there's a lot of different ways to do this uh, I think you have some experience in some ones that I've never touched before um, so so let's run through some of the different tools I guess for creating uh, creating custom post types, some of those uh, will just do that. Uh, also as well, creating custom fields because you kind of want to do post types and fields. You need, you really need both to get, to get everything out of it. Yeah, I mean, th there are lots of different tools out there. Some of them are free, some of them will cost you money. But what I would say is if you are new to this kind of thing and you're just looking to learn, there's a couple of resources that I would say are worth checking out because once you kind of understand how one tool works and the terminology that's around it, moving to something else is just learning the quirks. So it's, I guess what you could sort of say is if you learn to drive in for the American ones, a stick shift car, and then you go to an automatic, you don't really relearn how to drive. You just modify what you're used to, to take into consideration the slightly different controls so there's no longer a stick shift, you know, you're not changing gears, it's automatically done for you. And the same kind of thing goes when it comes to working with tools like advanced custom fields or ACF, like working with tools like Jet Engine or Pods. You know, they're all very similar in what they do. They might have slightly different terminology, they might have slightly different ways in which you do the same thing, but they're all doing the same thing. They're either creating custom post types or they're creating and adding meta fields in. So what I would suggest is if you're new to this and you really do want to learn to get an understanding before you invest any kind of money, I would say take a look at advanced custom fields because the normal version is free and it has probably 90% mm -hmm. of the pro version tools and more than enough to do probably most jobs you'd ever need. And then you've got a tool like CPT UI, which is just custom post type UI. That's a free plugin. The two of those combined together you've got enough to get you started. If you use Elemental and you want to go a little bit deeper, Elemental Pro is a great way then to easily grab that data through the dynamic tags. You know, if you want to create your own custom loops, and all a loop is, is basically if you look at a blog, a WordPress blog, each post is a loop item. So when you're looking at, you know, a series of say six blog items, each one of those is a loop item, and then you can use tools like Elemental Custom Skin, which again is totally free, and you can create your own custom loop items and then you can design the loop in a way that you want and pull in custom data. So this all might sound quite complicated and I can totally understand that. But what I would suggest is, and if Carl doesn't mind me sort of saying this, yeah. if you are new to this kind of thing, uh, probably earlier this year, I created beginner's guides to ACF, pods and jet engine, three of the sort of key tools that I would use to do this kind of thing. They take you from knowing nothing at all about these tools to through various different um, video tutorials up to the point where you then have a good understanding. You could probably pick which you think is the right tool for you. And you could start then advancing and learning more advanced kind of techniques. But there are lots of tools. So like I say, to start off with, I would say either choose pods or ACF and CPT UI, both of which are completely free. But then you also have things like uh, Jet Engine, which is part of Crocoblock suite. So if you've never heard of Crocoblock, it's basically a suite of plugins 
that give you a huge array of, of different control over what you can do with Elemental and to a certain extent Gutenberg. And they have part of that is to do with dynamic content, Jet Engine being the main part of it. And again, that allows you to create custom post types, allows you to create custom meta fields, a whole range of extra things as well. But it's core, it allows you to do those kinds of things. There are other ones out there, but if I'm honest, they're either tools that I've never looked at in any kind of real depth because they're expensive and most people don't want to pay a huge amount of money for something that they're learning about. You know, that's just a, a really difficult way to sort of sell to people. Use this tool. This is going to cost you $200 for this and another $150 for that. And I don't, and you don't know anything about how to use these tools. So it's not going to fly. So I would say, take a look if you want to add those two tools. Hopefully Kyle can sort of drop some information in the description to this or something later on for you if anyone's interested or hit me up wh whichever but they'll get you up to speed with the core tools and how you can at least get started and find out if this is a kind of road you want to continue down and seeing what kinds of tools there are available to you to be able to start building your own dynamic based websites yeah Over and so there. i i agree with everything you said there so uh the other one that i think we see come up the most that that wasn't in that list is tool set Toolset is really, really powerful, but I think tool sets uh, even more complicated than, than the ones we already talked about. So I really, if if this is something you're just starting out with, uh, I would probably shy away from tool set because it's just a lot more complicated. So usually the advice I give people is if you're brand new to this and you just want to dip your toe in the water, pods is a really good place to start mm -hmm. because it handles creating custom post types, creating custom fields and creating custom taxonomies all in one package. Uh, Pods is completely free. There's not even a pro version you could go buy if you wanted to. Uh, for a long time, it was being uh, supported uh, financially um, through uh, Matt Mullenweg, uh, and I believe that's no longer happening. Uh, no. So their their funding is, is through donations and things like that. Uh, I think the knock on Pods is that it's fairly slow to get developed uh, and for things to change. But honestly, uh, it, it's going to do 90% of the things we've already talked about in this call today. It will handle all those things for you. And it has great integrations with both Beaver Builder and Elementor. I don't know about Divi because I've never opened Divi. Um, my personal preference is using uh, CPT UI, like custom post type UI. It's a free plugin that will handle all creating your custom post types. Uh, and then using ACF or advanced custom fields to create all the fields within those post types. The the disadvantage there is you have to have two plugins to really accomplish that. They they wouldn't do you much good on their own, one without the other. Uh, but uh, those two are really, really powerful, really easy to use. And the free version of, of advanced custom fields, like you said, uh, does about 90% of everything. Uh, I have the pro version because I want that extra 10%, but you can really, uh, you can really get everything done with that. Uh, and then, like I said, there's a lot of people that swear on, uh, on tool set, but I, I found it too complicated for me. I think I, uh, I would say I'm, I'm like, uh, I can dominate the easy level of, of custom fields. Like if it was a video game and we put it on easy mode, like I can dominate there, but I don't do super advanced stuff with it yet. So, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't speak to that well. And then, uh, the jet engine stuff is just something I've never opened. So I, I really can't speak to that one. What, what are you using currently, Matt? Um, I'm using the, uh, the same, uh, like, two that you are uh like just you know advanced custom fields and uh and ui but um yeah we we are starting to get a couple of questions in here regarding uh, a lot of relationship stuff um okay. so like you know basically like what's the uh what's the best way to uh to set up relationships between different cpts that, that's a difficult one and, and not one that's very easy to answer it's in pretty open-ended yeah um i created videos on building relationships and a couple of different tools for doing it because the, the, the difficult part is not so much building the relationship it's how you output that relationship if you're using a tool like elemental pro by default elemental pro won't work with relationships you have to use third-party plugins to be able to do anything with it so i kind of think what is anywhere elemental pro is one that allows you to work with relationships there's there's one by Goose Studios. I take a look at it. I haven't tried it. And that's really focused on building relationships and setting those up. You can use Jet Engine with advanced custom fields and use it to create relationships in a visual fashion. So there's lots of different tools. And I would say 
if you look into to sort of see how relationships work, how to set them up and how to work with them, I don't think this is the best platform for doing it where we have a live chat. I would highly recommend just taking a look at my YouTube channel, the website, whichever one you want, and doing a search for relationships because I've already created, I think it's at least two or three, maybe a couple more videos that's dedicated to how you work with relationships. And I think that's going to give you more value than me just trying to explain it, you know, just to a screen kind of thing like this without mm -hmm. seeing what I'm doing and how you'd set things up. Because the difficult or the most complex part of working relationships is creating that relationship to start off with, whether it's going to be a one-to-one, -one, a one-to-many, or a many-to-many -many relationship, and where you have to really sit down and think, how do I need to use my data to link these together, and what way do I need to work with it from that point on? So it takes a little bit of time to sit down and actually structure the overall format of your content and then take a look at linking those relationships and then then the sort of like the technical aspect of outputting that relational data but yeah, it's not as complicated as you may first think but it just takes a little bit of forethought yeah i, I will uh, i'll put links to everything i can in the description but if you literally go to paul's uh youtube channel um I'm sorry, because now you're going to be there for the next like six weeks, just binge watching <laughs> YouTube videos. But uh, there's lots of good information there. I will say sometimes when you when you think you need some kind of relationship, uh, sometimes taxonomies can be that nice bridge where you don't have to do all that, right? So you can create a custom taxonomy and apply it to multiple post types, right? Uh, so if you had a post type for shoes and a post type for shirts uh, and a taxonomy for colors, right? Uh, that's kind of a way to, to bridge a relationship where you could still see all the uh, things that are green, right? And that might be shoes and it might be shirts or whatever examples I used. Uh, so there's some ways you can think about that where uh, you really don't have to go to a really long extent to accomplish what you need to accomplish. That, yeah, this is where I think it comes back to sitting down and actually structuring your data before you start creating anything. You know, you wouldn't start writing a, a novel just by sitting, you know, by, by opening up and starting right. to write the entire thing. In the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You put a skeleton together of what you're trying to achieve, you know, a, a, an outline structure of what it is the storyline is. And the same kind of thing goes for your database. If you just literally jump in there and start trying to create database tables and thinking, oh, this will work with that and that will work with that. You're going to find that halfway through the development cycle, unless you're really, really lucky, you're going to come across something you hadn't planned because you hadn't planned at all. And it's going to be, well, all the work I've done to this point is now useless to me because it isn't going to work the way I need it to because the data has to do this. So this is why I always suggest when you're working with more complicated projects that require relationships, sit down and plan out what it is you need to do, think it through, prototype it on a piece of paper or use, you know, something like um, one of the prototyping tools, the design tools you can use with Adobe and all those kinds of things, sketch and all that kind of thing. And you can kind of build your relationships between the different parts then and you can visually see how they need to interact with each other. And once you've kind of fleshed all that out, then you can start just sort of doing the non-designed technical side of things to make sure that it works and you don't right. come across problems and then you'll start adding in the pretty things. You know, that's, that's the way I would look at it. Planning is important for sure. Uh, yeah, well, you, you, you can't build a good house if you don't build good foundations. Right, right absolutely. Uh, we've had a couple of people asking about uh, a front end form submission for custom post types. So they were mentioning a tool here that I'm guessing had a Black Friday deal, Metabox. Uh, I'm not familiar with it, asking if it had a, a front end submission. But let's just talk about kind of front end submission uh, in general. So uh, typically we're in the back end of WordPress and we're going to be putting in the information inside the custom post type back there. Uh, but a lot of these do have. Uh, things built in or, or third party form tools where you can actually uh, okay. fill in all the content that goes in that custom post type from the front end. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, one of the, the sort of the most popular, well, two of the most popular tutorials that I've created over the last probably 12 months have been front end um, submission. Because if you've got a client, let's just use that analogy we had back at the beginning, which is a real estate site. If you build that for a client, you don't necessarily want to give them access to the dashboard of WordPress. It's much better to have a nice looking front end that they can log in, they can see the content they've put in there, you know, as opposed to seeing every single thing. And then they can manage things in a much nicer way. And this is where front end form 
plugins like ACF Front End Forms Pro, I think WP User Front End Forms Pro, some long-winded thing like that. They give you access to simpler ways of doing this without having to go in and hack the code. And if you're using this with a tool like Elementor Pro, where you can template a lot of this out, you can create a really great looking front end form that is seamlessly integrated with the back end information so that you kind of keep people out of that side of things. So they can't get stuck in and make any problems and you're going to lock the dashboard down, you know, so they only have access to certain things. You can create something that's a lot nicer. And like I say, those, those particular plugins, probably my preference is ACF front end forms pro and the free version. Cause that does a ton of things more, more than probably what most of us would need for most typical websites that you want to keep clients out. They just make the whole process super, super simple. And, to give you a little example, the first one I created, which was probably about a year or so ago, I got contacted by um, the developers over at Elementor and asked me, could they have access to that dashboard that I created in the back end of the site? Because they wanted to see how I'd done it because they liked it. And they wanted to see awesome. how have you gone about building all that kind of thing. So I don't know what they've done with it. So you never know. maybe in the future, we'll have that kind of facility built into Elementor. Have but, you gotten your checks for that yet? Are they in the mail I wish. or? I, I, I wish. It's in the post, apparently. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's, there's tools out there that make this really super easy. And again, if you look on, on the, the, um, the YouTube channel, just do front end forms, there's probably about five or six covering things like, you know, WooCommerce and, and ACF and Jet Engine, you know, most of those kind of key tools. I've created dedicated videos that will show you how to do all that, including free downloads of the template that's been used for that dashboard, which you can just then use as the basis of your own dashboards if you want to. Yeah, that exact video, actually, I had a uh, client of mine, um, they're planning on maybe in like three, four months to uh, to start some sort of like, um, like area of their website that's just for their their own staff and to, to hold like, you know, notes and, and meeting notes and stuff like that. And that exact video of yours is the uh, the one that uh, I'm in the process of doing exactly that. So uh, I can I highly recommend those videos. Thank you very uh, much. Shout out to Zach Pyle in the group here. He's uh, answering lots of questions in the uh, the comments here. So I appreciate it, buddy. Uh, let's see. Do we? Did you see uh, any more questions here that you wanted to make sure we covered, Matt? I was trying to scroll through here. Let's see, it looks like a lot of the questions we've already answered. Uh, relationships. Um, Tom asks, uh, "Hey, Paul and gang, can CPTs be used for simple ecom listings?" Um, like you you probably could do. Um, it's how you then integrate that with some form of payment would be the more complicated side of things. Right. And it's whether you really wanted to go down creating something from scratch that's kind of already been done by using tools that are already out there. Like, you know, WooCommerce might be a little bit overkill, but if it's digital downloads, for example, you look at it, sell it, then you've got like easy digital downloads. Sometimes it's better not to reinvent the wheel if you don't need to. And uh, like I said, the only thing I think would be complicated there would be to link it through to how you're going to be able to build people and then build the billing process and all those kinds of things. So you probably could do it. Well, actually you could do it. There's no real reason why you couldn't. It's whether you could do it without having a solid understanding of how ACF works and how you combine that with a templating system and a payment gateway and APIs and all those kinds of things. So it's like, the answer it's would probably worth be, the squeeze oh, there. Exactly. Yeah. It's a case of you probably could, but would you really want to? Right. Yeah. I, I think what you'd probably find is you're going to be opening some cans of worms that you didn't expect. Uh, yeah. So like the status of an order or order refunds or all these things that are just already built into a system like WooCommerce uh, for better or worse. Um, it's already got all of those things built in that you're going to eventually have to consider uh, with a custom post type. So I think there's you know, I, I wouldn't say there's a good blanket answer on should I use a pre-built tool or should I just build my own? For example, some of the other day asked, uh, they were looking for a, a pre-built system for doing like a business directory. And I'm like, man, for me, I'm just building a custom post type for that because then I can put in just the fields I need specific to this project. I don't have to reinvent anything. It's going to take me literally 10 minutes to create the post, custom post type and fields. Uh, so for me on a on a project like that, I would probably go custom post type route um, and just create it myself. But when you start talking about, should I do this for my own, 
like e-commerce solution, that's where I would back off and say, eh, probably just go with something that's already built. So. Right. Because there's all, there's, there's eventually going to be something like, unless you do e-commerce and that's like, that's what you live and breathe like those shipping, uh, like timeframes and all like all of the stuff that it handles, like you're, you're going to forget one of those things. Yeah. And if you're doing that for a client, the last thing you want is that one of the vital things that they need to be able to complete that transaction or complete the shipping or whatever just fundamentally doesn't work. And that's a whole sort of kind of whoop, should we say? Yeah. Yep. So uh, uh, before we wrap this up, I do want to ask, because I think uh, us and most of the people listening to this are building websites for clients. So do you bother explaining any of uh, you needing to build out these kinds of systems to clients? Or do you just uh, just produce the website they want? That's a good question. Simple answer, the latter. I, I don't think I don't think most clients care what you use to to create the solution to what they're looking for. And I think that I did a video on this ages and ages ago, a little talking head kind of thing. Because so many people go like, oh, should I tell my client I use Elementor? Should I tell them that I use you know, WordPress? All these kinds of things. And my answer to that whole question is the client generally doesn't care. All they want is they've got a problem. They want to sell online. They've got a restaurant. They want to have online booking. You know, whatever it is, they just have a problem and they want someone like you to provide a solution. The tools you use are completely irrelevant for 99.9% .9 of cases. So generally, if a client asked, you know, why are you charging me this much money for creating something, then I'd turn around and probably say, well, the reason being is because I've got to custom design these particular features for you. Don't need to go into detail as to what I'm using in the same way that if you took your car to a mechanic and they say, well, there's 10 things need to be done. You're not going to ask them what tools they're going to use to change the wheel, change the tire or change your clutch. You know, you don't care. You just want to pick your car up in a week's time, hand the money over begrudgingly and drive away and the car just feels good. And I would say the same thing kind of goes for most clients. They just want you to provide a solution to the problem and pay you the money and know that you there should be anything wrong afterwards, you know? So no, basically. Yeah. So I've, I, I, I totally agree with you in the, the car mechanic is a good analogy. Cause yeah, I wouldn't, I don't really care what they're going to use. I will say I, I've kind of structured my pricing based upon what, what I'm going to have to build out. Right. And so, uh, building out a, a custom post type, uh, versus not having to do that does require some additional work. Uh, it's not always a ton, but, um, so, so it does change how I price things sometimes. Although, um, you know, when you're talking about my show listings, you know, that example, I'm actually saving a ton of time by creating a custom post type than I would be to create all those as pages. So uh, sometimes that's actually just more, you know, financially responsible to do it that way. But I do use it as a selling point sometimes for clients on um, here recently, I did a website for a, a city, a small little city, and they wanted to have like a listing of all the businesses there. And I said, well, what I'll do is just create a system that makes it really easy for you to go in and create those listings, edit those listings and delete those listings. And basically what I explained to them was a custom post type uh, in layman's terms to just say, you know, if you could fill out a form and press save, then you can handle updating the website and creating a new listing. And it's going to look beautiful, just like all the others. So I will kind of use it uh, as a sales tool. Um, I think you know, sometimes that's the thing. that makes it helpful. Yeah, I think that's the thing is that you are using it as part of your sales pitch to say, well, look, this is going to be specific for you. I'm going to build what you are looking for. You know, you're not telling the tools. And I think the, the slight flip side of that is if you were going to build that for a client, if they come to you and you didn't know anything about custom post types and all those kinds of things, you'd have to go and find a plugin or plugins that would do what you needed to do, that would fit into what they wanted. And that can be time consuming because you've got to check out to make sure it does what you want it to do, probably buy it to test it to make sure it can do what you want it to do for the client. Mm -hmm. And then there's a potential for the ongoing license, the learning how to integrate it, will it integrate into your design process and all those kind of unknowns, you know, even just for the first time and maybe after that it's easier. But when you know about tools like advanced custom fields, you stop thinking about what can I find? What, what have I got in the past that's led me to do this? Or can I, can I get back to you in a week's time so I can come back with a proposal? Cause I just need to do some, some legwork to find out if it's viable. You just think, oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, I can use a custom post type. So realistically, it's probably saving you development time, research time, quotation time, 
and just knowing that you can do what they need to do because you've already done it with the tools that you are really used to. So the client basically comes away with probably a better deal mm -hmm. long term. And so do you because you spend a lot less time doing your research to just, you know, sort of quote on the project. Right. Yeah. And the other thing, uh, one thing that I use it for is um, I had this one client that wanted a, a directory of sorts where they would list out, I mean, literally hundreds of different uh, local activities for uh, for like kids of all ages, like, you know, and, and all of that, where because it was built with custom post types, the uh, the client was able to go in, add them, at, you know, however often they wanted. Um, they didn't really have the budget necessarily for me to sit there and, and perform data entry for all of these different listings. So one thing that I was able to do was to explain to them, like, I can set up the first like three to five. I'll show you, I'll, I'll record a, a tutorial video on how to go in, add your properties, but this is going to significantly reduce the price to the point where they were like, okay, we'll take this uh, or we'll hire you on. I built the site, I got that uh, that money, I got a care plan out of it so that there's, it's got a tail as well. And now the client goes in and basically does all of the, uh, the redundant data entry where they don't need to pay me to do that anymore. Yeah. But also okay. it makes it easy for them. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's kind of win-win for everybody. Yeah, they, they just, you know, you, you are not spending time doing something that, let's be honest about it, Boring. you probably have an hourly rate that you work on and if someone comes to you and says, okay, I need you to put in a hundred different businesses, you're going to think, well, that's going to take me 30 hours, for example, and I'm going to charge you $75 an hour. They're going to look at you and go, well, I could do that myself. But the reality is your time is worth that amount of money. And if right. you're doing donkey work, as it were, or you're doing sort of design work, which is more skilled, that doesn't make any difference to you. You can't just drop your price based upon the fact that it's more expensive per hour for them to do that than that. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, the client wins because they don't have to have anything that's complicated. They're just filling out a form as simple as that. You know, it, it, it makes the whole process easier and WordPress can be quite daunting for the uninitiated when they see how many options are in there. It just gets confusing for some people. And I think that's where a tool like ACF, you know, any kind of dynamic thing, especially with a front end dashboard where you can simplify it again. You know, you just make the whole process easier. So the time you invest in it can often save you a lot more time and get you a, a client that wouldn't be able to afford you to do those things that they can do themselves. Exactly. Absolutely. All right. Two things and then we'll wrap this up. I know we're pressed here uh, against time and there's many of us wanting to get to Dave Foy's lovely webinar that starts in like four minutes. Yes, so I've got, uh, uh, I think uh, we all want to do that. All right. Two things and I'll be quick. Uh, number one, um, James is curious about yeah. Matt's wooden structure. Scroll to the beginning of this and he'll tell you a little bit about it. And he's going to hopefully post some pictures of it next week. Uh, but I wanted to finish on this note. Uh, James uh, commented in here that Paul's dashboard video helped him raise $150,000 for their local children's hospital. So that is pretty damn awesome. Heck Hell yeah, that's amazing. That's really amazing to hear. So that, that's awesome. That's, that's, uh, that's made my day. Absolutely. Who knew just making a few little YouTube videos could do something like that? Right. You helped and contribute to $150,000 to help children. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. So well done. Whatever you did, whatever you took away from that video, well done. And uh, carry on doing what you're doing. No doubt. Well, I really appreciate you jumping on here with us, Paul. Uh, it's been really good to connect with you on here. Uh, like we mentioned several times throughout this, we're going to drop a bunch of links. If you go search WP Tuts on uh, YouTube, you'll find tons of Paul's videos. In fact, just search Elementor and you'll find tons of Paul's videos. Uh, there, there's all kinds of ways to find them on there, but we'll add plenty of links on here. And I, I really do appreciate you coming here and talking to us about all of this. All right, guys. Well, if this group or show helps you in any way, the best way to help us is to like and subscribe to our channel, share our content and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time and it greatly helps support the show. We will catch you all on the next one. Bye-bye.